So I'm going to talk about uh, exploratory testing, right? So this is an area which is much more important for the people who are doing manual testing because manual testing is a thing which is still going on. Although we have this uh, automation, uh, the buzzword in the industry, and we are using uh, tools like Selenium and Playwright, but manual testing is much more important. And uh, at least when we are going on each of the first sprints, the beginning, we need manual testing, right? So this is kind of, you know, adding masala to your manual testing process, right? So we know in manual testing, we take actually a set of test cases, which is already written and we try to, you know, test it, right? We, when we get a feature from the, you know, from the client or from the business uh, owner or the product owner, we take the requirements and we can come up with the test case and we try to test it, right? But uh, the question is, are we testing our product 100%? Because uh, when actually we know when in a, in a real situation, we test the product and suddenly the customer comes and say, no, there are bugs I'm finding in. And uh, sometimes the customer will come and tell, uh, argue with the project management team saying that the QA has not tested properly, right? This is a typical scenario which is happening. And so the question is, are we testing 100%? Are we giving our full effort, right? So first of all, starting this session, I'd like to thank and appreciate the effort that has been done by Michael Bolton and James Beck. These are the key guys who have been promoting exploratory testing, which they say as, which they kind of, you know, separate the two testing types as scripted testing and non-scripted testing. So scripted testing is where we write the test cases, we have a test plan, we go through the test cases. It's like the godfather of testing, we go through that uh, test, uh, test cases and we test it. Right, but non-scripted testing is where we use our, we take our, we put on our thinking, thinking hats, and we use uh, our creativity, and we go beyond the boundaries and try to test the products, try to you know excavate the issues that are that are hidden in the system, right? So would like to thank these guys for their great effort, right? So I'm going to talk about a little bit of the exploratory testing and what advantages that we can gain from this. And then we'll move into the testing tools and we'll try on some of the testing tools. So while uh, Vijay was doing a session, I was just glancing through doing some more research and I found a AI based exploratory testing uh, solution, which I will share for you all. Maybe next time in ATA GTR 2024, I might come up with this solution deployed and uh, do a demonstration for you guys. Okay. So exploratory testing is where we don't go on like we don't use the blueprints of you know auto uh, testing and we don't go through a process. It is allowing the tester, giving him giving him or her the freedom to test, right? So we tell them, okay, you you have to be innovative. You have to be uh, 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 kind of creative and try to find the bugs. It's like the QA being a hacker of the system, right? Five years of industry experience. I was in some of the companies and I was mostly, mostly to the automation, but when I was doing my manual testing, I'm a guy who goes and, you know, rolls the system upside down, right? Sometimes when I was in a one project, I was finding per day 500 bucks, okay? So it's really, you. it's like uh, the QA being a killer to find the bugs in the system, right? So we kind of, you know, we, do, we do not use test cases. We allow the QA to go and excavate, find, dig, and find the bugs which are there, right? So, characteristics of exploratory testing, right? So, there are things that, there are different, uh, there are characteristics that we can actually see which, which compares to scripted and non-scripted. So I call non-scripted testing as exploratory testing. That is what James Beck and Michael Bolton has been saying for us. So adaptability, okay? So testers can adapt their own system, on own process, own mechanisms to find bugs in the system, the hidden bugs, okay? So there are a lot of bugs. You cannot say that if we do a certain functional testing, like testing from the test cases, we, we cannot guarantee that the system is 
hundred percent fall proof, right? So there are bugs. Maybe customer may be going through different ways, and he will be operating the system because you cannot say you cannot foresee customer will do this, but they will go in wrong, you know, some other way, and you know they do some operations in the system, and the, there is a uh, in a web system it's four not four or five hundred error might come or a critical error that is ca coming in the system uh, UI. So so QA has to find bugs, and he they have been given the discretion. To adapt their own mechanism, like they can do performance testing. There are ways we will find bugs from performance testing, security testing. Okay, so there are ways they can find bugs. Learning and testing, it's a part of learning, right? But before enhance, before you know, engaging on exploratory testing, the QA should know the system, should know the system perfectly, the boundaries of the system, the integrations and everything before you know enhance in engaging on exploratory testing. Right, so they have to learn while also doing testing. They will learn about the system. They will un uncover the ex unexpected areas which the system might not handle in an exceptional situation. Right, and the testers has to be creative. They cannot be if you are doing exploratory testing. They cannot be inside a bottle. Right, they have to go out of the bottle. They have to break the glass and go outside and think and bring new ways to test the system. Maybe they can use tools such as Fiddler, which they can actually see backend messages, which are coming from the server and which are going. Because developers are a little bit of funny people. They might try to you know, uh, you know, cover the bugs using some kind of UI mechanisms, but then you have to use debugging mechanisms and all these things, maybe white box testing to uncover this uh, uh, uncover these covered bugs in the system. Okay, tester has the autonom autonomy. Tester is given total freedom to go and exploit the system and find bugs and report them and get it rectified. Right, and uh, so when it comes to uh, exploratory testing, there is not much documentation. Right, you don't you cannot give uh, hard rules to document it, but you can use the tools that I'm just showing you in the late, later part of this session to actually how we can document it, what we are doing through the exploratory testing process. Right. So, as I told you, there are differences between scripted and exploratory testing, right? So mainly scripted testing, uh, either we can do manual or automated scripted process. We have regression test cases, so we can automate them. So uh, we can, if there is a bug, we can replicate them, right? Uh, and we can execute it repeatedly. Those are the things that are there in scripted testing. But exploratory testing, that is where uh, testers can do it uh, parallelly, when simultaneous and parallelly. And also, uh, tester determines the steps, right? There is no given steps, so Sester will determine the steps, but uh, and also there is less of preparation and documentation, and it allows Tester to be more creative rather than doing just uh, you know stand the uh, always executing uh, regression test cases. So he has been given the full regression uh, discretion to use their own testing mechanisms to do exploratory testing, right? So sometimes. When it comes, we don't have test cases, right? Uh, so there are some of the techniques that we can use, right? Create user scenarios and stories. Sometimes when we are testing, we can create our user scenarios, okay? Go beyond the happy part. Now, normally we go through the happy part, but when you are exploring, you have to go the unknown or unexpected ways of testing this. Right, then finding the defects, okay, confirming the function whether it's a defect, okay, and also analyze gaps of functionality. Sometimes they might forget to add certain areas, okay, and plot out a mind map. You can create a mind map also before you are test starting as part testing. You can use you can use your creative ability to create up a create come up with a mind map. Okay, so these are kind of you know what are the techniques the techniques that you can do. Okay. So exploratory testing is not just 
functional testing, right? People always think it's exploratory testing is just functional testing. There are so many things that you can do. Okay. So you are exploring the system and you are given the discretion. So you can do navigation testing. Right? There is like you go to every each and every pages, find other ways to go to a particular page. Say, for example, there sometimes there might be a hidden way to go to a certain page, right? Then that page is not linked properly, right? So these kind of things uh, you have can check. Functional testing is normal way. You check the functionality, but not which are given in the test case, right? Sometimes you kill enter. Now, when I was uh, using a app like, like Uber in Sri Lanka, right? This is what I did. That I'm not a tester there, but I was a customer, right? I entered for my name. For my name, I entered a character limit of, you know, I, I had entered a set of 25,000 characters as my first name, okay? These guys never thought of it, right? We should put a character limit. So I actually entered and the, the, my name with uh, 25,000 characters got submitted to that app, which is like a, a taxi app like uh, Uber, right, in Sri Lanka. So what happened was the taxi driver came to me and said, sir, I can't see the screen because the entire 25,000 characters were covering his mobile application. So these are kind of ways that you can you know, kill the application, try to kill the application, try to bring down the application. That's where you are the king of testing, right? Not just, you know, executing just certain set of given test cases. Okay. You can do data input testing. That is what I had done. Okay. The, those are called, they, you enter large number of characters and see what will happen. Sometimes the entire application gets crashed. Now, when I was doing a, a mobile application testing in another company, I was doing some manual testing and I entered a large number of characters. And then what happened was the application totally crashed and the developer has to reinstall the application because I cannot bring back the application by clicking the icon. So these are things, compatibility testing. So you have to think, what if this is kind of a thing like you, that is test the things. It's a, it's a kind of what if scenario. What if, if I do like this, what if this application is run on certain device, device screen? Okay. So these things you have to think, these are the types of testing that you can do. And there are more, you can do security testing. Some people doesn't, okay, they, they test the application, some project teams, they don't think about security testing, right? So they just ignore it and they uh, send the ship to sale. Finally, when you send it, as soon as you send it, it gets synced. Why? Because there are a lot of hacks coming in. So you can think about, you have, can go to your lead and say, okay, what is, so if there is a financial um, functionality there, you have to say that you have to do security testing and you can bring up certain tools and you can do cross-site scripting, SQL injections, all these things and try to bring down the application. Because if you bring down the application at the testing stage, rather than going into you know, to the customer, you are the person, but if you send it to the customer and if the ship sinks, then the entire QA team gets the blame. That's how it is in the industry. And also you have to do performance testing. Now, when there was one scenario in Sri Lanka, there was actually a political crisis. So we had this uh, taxi app, which uh, we, were, we are using apart from Uber. Uh, so there was this, all of a sudden, there was a curfew. And the people were requesting vehicles. And what happened was the application actually didn't work. That means more than 1,000, 2,000 people were requesting. So what happens? There was a performance issue, right? So they must have done performance testing for certain 100 or 200 users, but they have not thought about this. So you have to think, you have to think what are the areas that might affect what are the areas? So they, there might be no, you know, actual documentation test cases. So you have to use your creative thinking, usability text, uh, testing. You have to think, you have to get into the shoes of the tester and also you have to think out of the box how this is. You can also suggest, okay, this button should be down, not up. So it's basically much more accessible when it's down, right? Error handling. You have to do certain errors, say whether the application enter some data and see whether the application handling those errors, right? 
accessibility testing. That's the most important when you're doing application for US. If you are to check, uh, you are the QA, you are the, you are the person who's responsible to do accessibility testing. Okay. So when you were in USA, I was working for Pearson when I was there, the accessibility testing is a mandatory thing. And if you do not, they will file a court case against the vendor. So you have to come up with all these things, all these testing mechanisms and try to find out out of the box things to, you know, uncover the issues. Okay. Next one. What is great about exploratory testing? Okay. Exploratory testing finds the bugs that we usually do not find in a normal way. Right. So when you say, when your QA lead comes and say, Arun, please run the regression. But when you run the regression, you cannot ensure that your application is defect proof. Okay. There will be issues and it comes. Right. So expert testing tries to find the unknown, un hidden parts of the application. Right. And exploit testing encourage innovation, knowledge sharing. So sometimes uh, you can get together with teams and you can discuss uh, through two or three people. Uh, what if this happens like this? Then another one says, yeah, that way if we discuss, sometimes there will be an error, right? What if the, this load is by 2000, right? What, will the system ha handle it? Will there be a round robin system to you know uh, process data? What happens? This service goes down. Will there be a secondary service? Those are also part of QS, which they can question the systems team for them to open up the eyes, right? If you open up the eyes, you can open the eyes of the other people, right? Exploit testing encourages continuous learning. That will actually help you because you will try to find ways to now say, for example, Gita, he doesn't, she doesn't know certain ways, but she can browse through internet, get some ideas get some uh, collaborate with certain people and also she will learn exploit testing how to explore this system right so then complement uh, complements continuous testing it will be helpful us to continuously test right like the shift left testing approach we go through the other normal not the shift right page but shift left testing like continuous integration this also allows us to continuously test Right. Now we go into the tools, right? These are certain utility programs that will help us to actually uh, do some exploratory testing and continue our exploratory testing process, right? Everyone uh, can you all install these tools. One is called bug magnet. Okay. This bug magnet tool uh, can you uh, search bug magnet and it's there as a uh, chrome add-on deepthi can uh, the audience install this one maybe you can share the link or the name in the chat kusha okay I have shared it. Okay, great. Maybe you can continue. Yeah. So what this does is we can install this add-on, right? When it goes to certain inputs, like uh, say we'll go to Guru99 site. Okay. So what happens here is now we have inputs, right? So what we can do is we can right click and go to bug magnet and it gives us all these possible inputs that you all can test. Say if I want to enter an amount which is this much, it will get entered. So it's like doing some kind of you know exceptional testing with bug matter. These are kind of utilities, right? So you can see text size. Go here. Bug magnet text size with spaces without spaces. You can enter here. Yeah. So it will help us to, you know, find if the width is very large one, if we enter, we don't have to, you know, go to word, uh, win word and, you know, can do the character count and come and paste this. You can use this utility for you, for you all to in enter inputs, right? 
So this is for entering inputs. You have this uh, tool called bug magnet, right? Then the other one, right? So they will go to the other tool. This is called bug magnet. So it is there in, as Chrome and Firefox. You can use it. This is kind of uh, tools that will help us to do uh, exploratory testing, right? Okay. Next one is the exploratory testing Chrome extension, right? There is a Chrome extension where we can use for exploratory testing, right? This is this does not enter, generate any of you know. It's about you know when you are doing exploratory testing, you don't have test cases. So you, it's while you are doing, you have to document it's document stuff, right? You can create bugs. You can document bugs, right? And you can add a screenshot. You can create notes. So what I've done is I will also give that link. So exploratory testing Chrome extension. So you can install this as a Chrome extension to do your exploratory testing because while doing, you have to document the stuff like this one. So if I'm going here, so if I find some issue here, okay, then I bring this thing up. If there is a bug, I will say there is a unknown message displayed in the screen when we enter some blank or blank something. Okay. So you can document, right? So you have can have a screenshot and on and you can document another one. You can create a note and you can have a screenshot there. And then uh, you can export this or you can view the report. Okay, and you can see the screenshot and everything. So it's like documented. Then you can export to an HTML and uh, get it as a HTML report. Here you go, right? So this is also a utility because we need to, sometimes we will go through uh, very far, you know, we don't have anything documented. So we will just do use our thinking hats and we'll go through this uh, entire testing scenario and we won't document anything. So we will find, ah, I found a bug, but I can't remember there. So while testing, if you find a bug, we can document it there and it will get saved. So at the end, you can take a report like this and you can uh, open up defects in your system like Jira, right? So that is the other one. Okay, then we have, okay, then we have next one. Let's say extension. Okay, Textpad. Textpad is a web-based solution, right? It's like a test case generating tool, but mainly it's not that much, you know, complex, but uh, you can use Textpad Right. So what I've done is I have created, I have created a project. So you, there is an example project. So when I create a project, I can create it from here. I can add say test project. So this is all about documenting, right? So then what happens here is, I have to refresh it. Oh, it didn't get there. No, it had to enter test project. And you're doing oh test. Then you have to enter. Then it gets saved. Then in here, you can add a script. New script is kind of a test case. So you can say login. Okay. So while doing this, you can actually uh, create your test case. So uh, say for example, entering a large number. Okay. So what we do is Okay, here. Yeah. So when here we can create, okay, enter, enter a, a symbol like dollar at sign like this for username. Okay, 
This is like the test case management tool, but on the go, you can create this one. Okay. Then you have to enter. Then you go to the other one, enter password blank. Okay, you can create a blank password and then enter button. Okay, no, click on the button. So this is something like username password thing. Click on the button. Right. So like this, and you will get uh say we'll display an error unhandled exception. Right. So then after that. We can save this. We can go back. Okay. You can create a test run. Okay. So here you can create a test run also. That is that you can create uh, uh, what you have run and you can put that pass. But if it's failing, you can actually this will get saved. Now, say for example, I put my one. Okay. Save. Okay. Save. Right. Then I can say whether it's okay this is pass but here pass but you can say here also expecting it should not come this error message okay so you can say expect uh, error another error exception should not display put like that so what happens here is that uh, you can say this one is pass but this is pass but this is failure, right? So in the next one, next one also, you can create a new test run and you can now, you can you can add people for this one. Okay, so when we go back, you can see my test run, okay? And also you can create user, if you are the admin user, you can create users here. Manage team. So you can create a team, you can add people here, new user, and you can give his name and email address. And uh, say, I put my this one. And if you send an uh, invite user, he will get an invite. And you get an invite to log in to the system, and you can create a password, and it will come. Okay, so this is another, so that then that if that user is added, you can assign this test run to that user also. It's a kind of a collaborative tool, right? So this is the other tool called TestPad, right? That is also used in exploratory testing, right? Then the other one, this tool is giving me a problem. This is a bug, okay? This is from a tool called Spira, okay? Uh, we call it Spira, Spira. It's explore after we test the tool. So it's called Spire Capture, right? So you can use this tool, right? Small problem is uh, when you install it, I don't know whether it's the new Chrome is not supporting this one, right? So it's not showing here, but basically what we do is we go to this site, it will help us to you know log what we are doing. And well, for example, let's go here. This one. So you can add a step, right? Okay. Go to URL. And you can give something here. And you can take a screenshot. And that's that. Okay. Then again, if you are doing something, to enter something here. Okay. Say I enter an invalid character like this. Then I can create another one step. And I say enter 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 symbols for two ID. so what happens is we can take a screenshot of that okay so after doing this we can view the report actually go here and you can see that it will actually record what we are doing here. Yeah. 
So then we can actually export this one. I, the problem is we have to export this to Spira test. So what I will do is we we now we we have to have Spira test solution to export this, but you can actually export this via uh, save as save as, and you can save as to uh, yes. Test one, two, three. Where is this one? No. So you can actually see the report for your viewing and it has all your description and everything, what you had done. Let me go to the other one. Okay. So these are kind of tools that we can use for, you know, exploratory testing. It's not like, you know, extravagant ones, but these are kind of the, you know, doing exploratory testing, it's our brain, right? It's our practice, it's our innovativeness, it's our creative ability to, you know, do exploratory testing. But these tools will actually help you all to do the testing, exploratory testing process because when I was doing exploratory testing process, sometimes when I was going through, you know, unknown paths, I used to, when I find a defect, I used to, I, I, I used to, you know, forget to log that defect, right? Sometimes I forget to log the steps that I've done. So I go again and see, oh no, the defect is not coming. What step did I miss, right? So these kind of things are, you know, on the go, help you to record all your exploratory testing steps, right? So these are the tools that are used, Spira test, Bug magnet, exploratory testing extension, and testpad are the tools that are used for exploratory testing, right? So there are other um, there is another ample tool which I just did some research and found. This is called AI AIF EX. Okay, this is use of AI to do exploratory testing. So the thing is, you have to deploy this server, right? And you had to, you know, create, you can use a free online server also. Then you have to set it this up. And then I think you have to set the application here. So I have not gone deep into this, but I'm trying to go uh, implement this and do a session, maybe do a session next uh, ATA GTR or maybe ATA uh, online session. But this is a tool which helps us to, you know, integrate AI into exploratory testing, right? There are not much tools available for exploratory testing, right? Um, I tried to use in ChatGPT, okay? So ChatGPT is not that. Uh, so I wanted to find a, a give me exploratory testing test cases. Let's see whether publicly open one, right? So go to 99, let's take good 99. That GPT, that GPT, I just tried that one, but it's not giving much exploratory test for, let's see what it's giving. So it just gives the generic stuff, okay? But it gives how to, you know, check this application by generic. It doesn't give us the, uh, uh, the test case, actual test cases to do this, right? But uh, just try on this one. I will share, share the URL. Okay. I have sent the URL. Okay. Other tools also test pad. I will send the URL for you guys. Um, Kushan, I think you are on mute uh, accidentally. You'll have to unmute yourself. Did you guys got the last part? Okay. Repeat. So, yeah. So, this is the tool. Uh, maybe I have missed this one. Right. Uh, so, I have to, uh, told about Spider Capture. Okay. This tool has an issue with the new Chrome plugin. I don't know whether it's, you cannot see the actual menu here. Uh, so this tool actually generates you, so you can actually capture what is happening in. So when I start capturing, I can create steps and I, I can take screenshots. So while I'm doing something, and while I'm going on the process, I can document it, 
right? So that I can refer it back if there is an issue to create a bug, right? So the same thing is also the Chrome extension, expert testing Chrome extension, which helps us to document bug with screenshots, notes, any questions, ideas, okay? This we can uh, create it and we can create a report on it and export it so that you have a kind of kind of test execution report, right? You all can refer, right? Then the other one is bug magnet, which actually I showed you all, which can actually create, you know, when it comes into the, uh, let me go back to Guru. Oh, yeah. So it gives us the ability to actually create inputs which helps us to do except, uh, exceptional, you know, exploratory testing. Okay. So you can add all this and check whether it supports certain uh, where you put uh, symbols and see whether your application supports everything. If there are unknown exception coming in, sometimes you might uh, submit this, but you will get an error message like big error page, 500 error page. Those are actually issues that are coming from your exploratory testing process, right? And the other one is the, again, okay, it's there. Uh, then the other one is this one, AI FEX, okay, FX, if I fix, or that's the, how you call it. So this is a open source solution where you can create a server and you can host the application and you can do exploratory tests. Okay, uh, so I have shared you the shared you all the link for this one. Just try it out. I want to also try it because I was doing some research on this. How can AI help us to you know do exploratory testing? So this is the tool that I can find in the industry, but still, since AI is just still growing, maybe later, like uh, five years forward or three years forward, they might come up with tools to do exploratory testing which will help, which will not replace QA, but it will help the QA to identify things, uh, scenarios which he or she doesn't have in his mind, okay? So these are the tools that is there. So tools will help you to actually uh, do the exploratory testing. It will help you to document the stuff because when I was doing also, I was forgetting certain steps. When I found an issue, oh God, what I did, I couldn't uh, remember, I couldn't recall. So these things will help you to, you know, record the steps that you are doing in your exploratory testing process. Okay. So that's about this session. Anyone have questions? Uh, yes, Kushan. And I have a small, I have a small piece. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to send a, a phone back cover with all the you know automation logos test automation tool logos right so i want a person to answer my question and uh, that person can connect me through linkedin right and i can get uh, he or she's address and i can send and i need the phone model also to get it uh, uh, printed here because everyone has different phone models so i can send that person a back cover with all the automation tools that is there in the industry, including Selenium. So I'm just asking one question. The person who answers first will get this. I'm asking, uh, what are the give, name uh, three advantages that we can gain from exploratory testing? Okay, so name three and who can type in, first person who can type in the chat wins that prize. So I will send that person the price from through mail, through the post, and I that person should connect me through LinkedIn. Who can There's answer? A very interesting quiz question by Kushan. So you can yeah. uh, send in your responses in the chat. And Kushan, maybe you can also have a look at the chat in the meanwhile. Okay. But try and send all the three together. Uh, I think Kirti has typed in two for us. Um, yes. Kushan, can you repeat your question? What do you want? It's like hard thing. I want uh, three uh, advantages that the testers can, uh, testing team can gain from exploratory testing. Okay. Kirti has given testing corner case scenarios, award critical pro production bugs. She has given only two. 
Well, we yeah. have uh, Akshata who gave three uh, hidden defects, edge cases and unknown scenarios. Unknown scenario. And Avinash gave us three again, unexpected bug boundary. Value. That is, uh, oh, okay, those two are like, you know, it's not advantageous. Mm -hmm. uh, flexibility created rapid feedback. Yeah. So pick up the winner maybe good. from the chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I will actually now, when I go through uh, uh, Kirti, there is only two, right? And when I go through uh, Akshan, right? Akshant, right? Uh, he has given uh, unknown scenarios, uh, not the advantages, right? So, but uh, when I go to uh, Divya, flexibility and creativity, rapid feedback, real user simulation, yeah, she wins. Who's Divya? Okay, Kushan selects Divya's answer as the most uh, creative and uh, suitable one. Divya, if you're there, you can come on uh, air. You can just unmute yourself and say hi. Hi, Kushan. How are you? Okay. I'm good. You are in. Uh, can you come on video? Is it possible? Uh, actually, I'm uh, on my personal computer and its camera is not working, actually. Okay, no problem. So, uh, you have to uh, give me the phone model. You can you connect me, Divya. Can you connect me through Indian uh, LinkedIn? Yes, sir. You know, I will. Uh, you know, you can search me through LinkedIn, Kushan Amalasiri, and uh, please uh, send me a request. I will add you, and please uh, mention the phone model that you have, so I will send you one, and also your address, correct address, okay. postal address. Okay, so okay. I will send it from Sri Lanka. Okay, okay, sir. Sure. I will. I'm just finding you on LinkedIn. Okay, so I'll sign it for you and uh, send me your name. I will also type your name for that. So it's uh, designed by me. Okay, yeah, my name is Divya Sakti Kumar, actually. Okay, yes, uh, Divya, can you uh, you found me in through in LinkedIn? Yes, yes, I just sent you connection request. Okay, cool. So my advice Kushan to Sal all Kushan Chalinda Amarasi. Yeah, right, right. So uh so my advice to all, right? I want every QA uh, professional he joined here to do a lot of research, right? And do a lot of research. Uh, basically, the norm is now for AI, but be stable in automation testing. Learn about a lot of automation testing tools and you should know what is happening in the automation testing arena because there is this playwright coming up. Cypress is going a little bit down and uh, there was a uh, kind of a big uh, ha-ho going on for Catalan Studio, but now it's a little bit also going down. So you all have to be always uh, updated with your knowledge, right? Uh, on automation testing technologies, performance testing, security testing tools. Because the uh, world is now expecting a full stack tester rather than a person who is individually, you know, uh, uh, targeting to a particular area of skill level. So what I want people, I always advise my students also, uh, my uh, people who are working with me, I want them to learn, I want them to do research. Uh, at least spend uh, two to three hours a day to do research, find new things, because that is an investment which will gain, give you a return at the later stage of your career, uh, career growth, career, um, you say, career experience. So please learn. I want people who have not been speakers to be speakers in ATGTR 2024, right? I like to see more new faces coming up. So I have Kushan, been can you GTA. can you unshare yeah. your screen because then we then we can see your video as well. Ah, okay. I think uh, yeah. Can see. Uh, it's not uh, unshared, Kushan. Yeah, okay. unscre unshare your screen. Ah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now we can see. So I have been with ATA GTR for Nike who are from twenty seventeen. And it is a nice journey with Aditya and the team. 
especially hard yeah, so i think yes it is ata ata so it's not only aditya there are so many people 48 organizing team members kushan and yes we really appreciate your presence thank you so much for this wonderful wonderful session rather i think a lot of people were interacting and learned uh, the tools that you are showing them for exploratory testing and uh, yeah. thank you so much for being with us kushan yeah okay Kushan, I think we just had one question. Uh, one's expertise, random clicks or data insertion can help him or her break application very well during exploration testing. But other than yeah. this, what more techniques can be employed during exploratory testing? Okay, so what I have done is uh, when I get an application, when I start, I just go through a feature and I think about what is really happening in it. What is the expected thing? that the customer wants here, right? But then the, you have the happy part. That's the expected thing that the customer wants. Then what I think is, what if, now why, what, I, what I do is, what if I do like this? Say, for example, what if I, now the is this, okay, whether, now when I get a entering customer name, first name, I normally check, okay, what if I enter, what if the system doesn't handle uh, more than 2,000 characters? Then what I do is I take word, I you know, type 2,500 characters or I, there are tools to generate 2,500 characters online. So then I paste it. Then I paste it and then I submit it. And if it gets submitted, then I should know, okay, now this is get submitted. This is the customer's portal. What happens if it goes to the driver? Then I used to you know access the driver and find, right? Sometimes uh, you have to think, okay, uh, say for example, if a service breaks down, right? For example, if the internet goes off, right? You can uh, switch off the internet. Now, earlier stage, LinkedIn was an issue, right? I used to you know access LinkedIn application. Then I used to close the internet. And all of a sudden, the application gets, you know, it uh, crashes down. So there are so many things we can do. Sometimes, uh, as you see, so much uh, like quick clicks also will create an error message. Sometimes if you don't enter any data, that will create an error message. Sometimes you can do something like this, which where you put a JavaScript in your input box. And if you submit, if that JavaScript gets shown, that's also security concern. So that means your, your application will execute certain scripts. And sometimes that script might be to take data from the database. So there are a lot of things. The main thing is to, for us to, you know, gain more knowledge. But we have to have a good understanding about the application, its architecture, how this is being done. So it's just not functional testing. It's a lot of, you know, security testing, performance testing, all these things are connected to exploratory testing. Thank you so much, Kushan. Thank you for overlaying the yeah. analysis in detail for us. Yeah. Uh, that's that's it with the questions part of it. Uh, folks who have more questions can feel free to put it on chat. Uh, 